Hello Food Professional. This is Muhammad Arif Lane, a food safety and quality management system lead auditor and trainer. Today, I will explain food fraud detection, mitigation and control. The objective of this training session is to provide awareness to the food professional and to develop communication channel between the government and the food industry and to provide my inputs for the improvement of food safety management system in the extended supply chain. So the first question which comes into the mind is what is food fraud? Food fraud or economically motivated adulteration is the intentional addition, substitution or dilution of food adulterant into the food products or its raw material or misrepresentation such as mislabeling uh, or some false or misleading statement into the food product or its raw material for the purpose of financial gain by increasing the apparent value of the food product. In this video clip, you will see how a food product such as milk is adulterated. Food authorities found adulterated milk with urea and detergent and they dispose of the huge quantity of milk. Unfortunately, that milk was adulterated by the middlemen or suppliers who added contaminated water, urea and detergent to the milk. They were involved in this fraudulent and criminal activities from a long time. In this session, we will discuss the following topics. What is food fraud? Types of food fraud, dilution, substitution, concealment, mislabeling, grey market production, theft or diversion, unapproved enhancement, counterfeiting, food adulterants and their harmful effects, food fraud a global issue and food fraud detection and analytical methods. So the first thing is dilution. Food products can be adulterated by different ways and dilution is one of them. Dilution is a cheaper liquid alternative is added to a high value ingredient such as olive oil is diluted with other cheaper oil such as rapeseed or sunflower. Milk is diluted with water. Honey is diluted with rice syrup or corn syrup. In the upcoming video you will see how honey is adulterated with a new type of adulterant. In the past, honey used to be adulterated with rice and corn syrup, cane sugar and beet sugar. But these adulterants were easily detected by C3 and C4 test. But recently, a new adulterant, Chinese sugar, or fructose can easily pass C3 and C4 test and undetected by, by these tests. Now we know that anybody who wants to adulterate honey can mix 50% sugar into their honey and this will go undetected. Bees manufacture honey and bring us nature's goodness which is not sugar. It is all about enzymes, amino acids and phenolic acids. This is substitution and substitution is replacing an ingredient or part of the product of high value with another ingredient or part of the product of lower value such as premium basmati rice is substituted with cheaper variety of rice. Premium cocoa butter is substituted by hydrogenated fat in chocolate without labeling. Sunflower oil is substituted with mineral oil. Concealment Concealment is hiding the low quality of food ingredients or products. For example, harmful colors sprayed on fruits and vegetables 
to conceal their defects. Poultry is injected with hormones to conceal the disease. Mislabeling Mislabeling or misrepresentation of food product is done by providing false or misleading statement for the financial gain with the intent of deceiving the consumer regarding what is actually in the package. Fraudulent labeling claims, for example, organic, kosher, halal may be mislabeled on the product. Falsification of expiration date on the food products. False provenance claim such as basmati rice labeled on non-basmati variety rice. Italian olive oil labeled on Spanish olive oil. Gray market, market production diversion, unregulated channels outside of regulatory control or smuggling come under grey market production and diversion. Unapproved enhancement. Unapproved enhancement involves the fraudulent addition of a substance specifically for its function, not as a replacement for volume or weight. For example, addition of melamine to artificially increase the apparent protein content of milk. The addition of unauthorized coloring agent such as Sudan dye to spices. Counterfeiting Counterfeiting is the copying of the brand name, packaging concept, recipe, processing method, etc. of food products for economic gain you can see different products like uh, black paper which is authentic and black paper which is adulterated with papaya seed similarly saffron counterfeiting and vanilla scandal and horse meat scandal and adulteration in milk they all are counterfeiting now you can see different adulterants and their harmful effect. For example, in milk, the adulterants include unhygienic water, chalk powder, so soap powder, hydrogen peroxide, and urea. And their harmful effect include food poisoning, heart problem, cancer, vomiting, and nausea. In black paper, papaya seeds are the adulterants, and their harmful effects include liver disorders, stomach disorders similarly in oil the adulterant are argamon seeds and their harmful effect include epidemic dropsy severe glau glaucoma and in ghee the adulterants include vegetable oil animal body fats and their harmful effect include anemia enlargement of heart and in chili powder the adulterants are brick powder and sawdust and their harmful effect include stomach problem and artificial colors can cause cancer. In turmeric powder, yellow aniline dye, non-permitted colorants like mannitol yellow are the adulterants and their harmful effect include carcinogenic and stomach disorders. Now, I will explain food fraud as a global issue. In the year 2017, few European countries conducted a joint investigation with the collaboration of Europol and Interpol to mitigate the food fraud cases. It was found that total approximated weight of all adulterated product was greater than 50,000 metric tons with the estimated value of about 130 million US dollar. The most adulterated food commodities were fish and seafood, dairy products, oil and fats, meat products, beverages, honey or sweeteners, grain products, produce, spices, food, fruit juices, eggs and coffee or tea. And the type of adulteration were substitution, dilution, artificial enhancement, counterfeit, transshipment, mislabeling, distribution of contaminated product and 
theft and resale issues. There are lots of information regarding food fraud. For example, SA food fraud vulnerability assessment, USP food fraud database, uh, and USP food fraud mitigation guidance, fear of horizon scan, FPDI database, and GMA EML alert. Now, we will discuss about food fraud detection. There are various instrumental techniques to detect food fraud. For example, HPLC or high performance liquid chromatography. HPLC or high performance liquid chromatography is an analytical technique to separate, identify and quantify components in a mixture. This method can be used to test adulterant in liquid food products. NMR or Nuclear Magnetic Resonance Spectroscopy is extensively used to detect food adulteration in food samples. It operates by creating the electron clouds of oscillating nuclei of every food product. So, every food raw material has its own fingerprint in NMR and the difference in the electron cloud of nuclei can be recorded by the NMR spectra. Refractive Index Every raw material has a specific refractive index which is representative of that particular commodity. Density is also a representative of a particular food commodity. So with a tolerance, density can be used to determine the authenticity of that particular raw material. Free flowing behavior and bulk density is also a representative of a particular raw material and can be used to have an estimation of the authenticity of the product. Brick's measurement of raw material. As we know that particular commodity have a range of bricks which is a representative of that particular commodity. Food fraud detection in saffron using a simple method. Take a transparent glass of water, add a teaspoon of saffron. Adulterated saffron will be settled down and it can be easily identified such as maize corn filament and other commodities which are colored and they appear as saffron. So the conclusion is we have to come forward and play our role to protect food authenticity for our future generation. Good food should be a right, not a privilege.